Okay, you are welcome to session seven, which is Observational Learning, part one. My name is Inus Adon Nasiru, lecturer at University of Ghana, Lego. So here, we're going to be looking at another type of uh, learning, observational learning. We already dis discussed classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Now let's focus our attention on observational learning. So this is a form of learning that occurs by observation. It tells us that it's not all the time that you have people learning through uh, reinforcement and punishments. Sometimes learning can take place after the individual observes what others do. So we'll look at observational learning and then discuss the process through which such learning occurs. So we expect that at the end of the session, you, the student, will be in the position to demonstrate the understanding of Bandura's observational learning and be able to explain the processes of observational learning and also discuss the factors that influence observational learning. So with this, for this session, we're going to look at three main topics. Looking at topic one, Bandura's observational learning, topic two, the process of observational learning and three factors that influence observational learning. As usual, the relevant chapters and the reading list are provided for you uh, on Sakai. Let's look at uh, Bandura's observational learning. What is it? It is said to have uh, occurred in the learning situation in which an observer's behavior changes after viewing the behavior of another person who is referred to as a model. When you observe another person's behavior and your behavior changes as a result of observing that person who is your model, then observational learning is said to have occurred. So it's just one of the ways that you, you might know already. Simply watching the behavior of another person and later imitating that uh, person's behavior. That person, you, you here will refer to that person as a model, the behavior. So the key proponent is Albert Bandura. Albert Bandura. Um, so what he did was to conduct a series of experiments. Let's take a look at some of the experiments. The first one is the, uh, the Bobo doll studies. Bandura conducted the Bobo Doll Studies, in which 24 preschool children were assigned to each of three conditions. The first one, the first group of uh, children were made to observe aggressive adult models. The second group observed inhibited non-aggressive models. And the third, which is the control group, they had no prior exposure to the models and this brought about different uh, results. But the key of the results, uh, the key ones are that those children who were exposed to aggressive models later on reproduced a good deal of aggressive behaviors resembling that of the models they observed. It tells you that when they observed them, it influenced their behaviors. And those in the aggressive condition, so exhibited significantly more important imitative and non-imitative aggressive behavior. So simple, telling us that observation is a powerful learning process. So you learn mostly when um, you observe, because it ends up influencing the uh, behavior of the person who observes ends up influencing the behavior of the person who observes. So with this experiment, some people came to um, criticize the way the experiment was conducted. So criticisms of Bandura's uh, experiment. There are several criticisms that were leveled against this experiment. The first one is that the experiment conducted was unethical and morally wrong because the children were trained to be aggressive. That's straightforward. The next is that the experiment might have 
had long-term implications on the children because what they learned would take a very long time to extinct. And then we also have a point where it was observed that the children were manipulated to respond to the aggressive um, movie. Also, some of the children were teased because they became frustrated. They couldn't touch the toys that they were watching. And then the last point is that uh, the suggestion that the children were often playing and not necessarily aggressing. So for the children, what they saw was what they were just doing. They, were, they didn't have that intention of engaging in aggression, but rather they were just playing, basing it on what they were exposed to. So that is it, the initial process of what the, uh, the experiment conducted by Bandura is about. Now let's look at the processes of observational learning as topic two. Topic two, the processes of observational learning. So here we have four key processes. Attention, retention, motor reproduction, and motivation. Attention, retention, motor reproduction, and motivation. So let's take them one after the other. Attention and retention together account for acquisition or learning of the model's behavior. So in the process of observation, when one pays attention, so you can retain whatever is watching, it leads to acquisition or learning of their behavior. And the last two, which is motor reproduction and motivation, serve as controlling the performance of the behavior. So let's take the first one, attention. The observer cannot learn unless they pay attention to what is happening around them. So paying attention is critical during observational learning. So it's important that attention is paid to whatever is happening about the model or about the environment so they could acquire the behavior. Retention is next. So here, it's, uh, it's important for the observer to um, be able to remember the behavior that is observed at some point in time. So if it's important that they have to retain whatever is observed so they can remember to bring it out. So retention is very important. And then also, um, motor reproduction. So the behavior that was observed will have to be exhibited. So we have physically and intellectually, the, 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 the observer must be capable of producing the behavior that was observed. So if, for instance, you're observing how people play football and you don't have the physical strength, you don't have the intellectual uh, readiness to be able to engage in playing football, then you wouldn't be able to uh, reproduce that behavior in the future. So it's important that we have uh, the, the observer being physically and intellectually capable of producing the behavior that he or she is observing. For instance, dancing skills also is one of the uh, examples you can give. If you observe how people dance and you want to dance, you want to be a dancer, you observe how people dance and you don't have the physical strength, you don't have the skills involved in doing it, you may not be able to successfully observe and exhibit the behavior in the future. Then reinforcement, the last one, reinforcement or motivation. In general, observers who perform the act um, most of the time if they have some motivation or reason to do so. Sometimes you observe a behavior, but you may not immediately be able to exhibit the behavior until there is a form of reinforcement or there should be a reason why you should do it. That one, you are likely to do it and do it very well to, to, to signify that you have really observed the behavior. So these three, these four important uh, processes are very important, attention, retention, motor reproduction, and then reinforcement or motivation. So that is it for the processes of motivational um, learning. So the last topic for this session is, I want to look at factors that affect motivational learning. 
factors affecting observational um, learning. There are so many factors, but we'll limit our discussion to uh, these core ones. Developmental level of the learner. So one needs to be developmentally matured to fully accomplish all the steps in observational learning. For instance, children may want to think. It depends on the age and also depends on the person's maturity to be able to uh, learn how to sing properly. And I also mentioned initially the uh, playing of football at the uh, adult level. A child who is not matured may not be able to, even though he may want to, may not be able to because of the uh, lack of maturity developmentally to engage in this behavior. And then also it was observed that um, the prestige of the model is very important in observation. Studies show that learners will more likely imitate a prestigious person than an average person. So, but this is subjective in a way. What is pre prestigious uh, is, uh, what is uh, prestige? What prestige is depends on the person and the culture and all that. And then also similarity of the models. Learners are more likely to pay attention to a person who is similar to them in terms of the person's beliefs, attitudes, and um, behavior. So these uh, three uh, very important factors that affect uh, observational learning. There is one thing that we need to get, and it's vicarious consequences. Vicarious consequences. The observer will react to the way a model is treated and mimic the model's behavior. So usually, um, when a model's behavior is rewarded, the likelihood is that the observer will reproduce the, the rewarded behavior. And this is called vicarious reinforcement. So the other person is reinforced or rewarded, but the observer who is observing how the reinforcement took place then learns to want to engage in that behavior, vicarious reinforcement. He's not receiving the reinforcement himself, but rather another person is receiving the reinforcement for engaging in a certain behavior. So we want to engage in that behavior so that you also get the reinforcement in the future. Then, on the other hand, when the model is punished, the observer is less likely to reproduce the same behavior, and this is called vicarious punishment, just as we explained. When someone engages in a behavior that's not acceptable and the, person is, the person's behavior is punished, and that, behavior, that behavior is not likely to be uh, imitated by the observer. For instance, someone engaging in theft or stealing another person's property and sent to jail, as a sign of engaging in this behavior, whoever is observing may not want to engage in stealing or theft because it's likely to also be uh, punished. So being, uh, going through this situation of being rewarded, as another person being rewarded or being punished has a tendency of influencing how the observer is likely to a bit uh, engage in the behavior in observational learning. Thank you very much, and this is uh, the first part of observational learning in session seven. We'll now move on to the next session uh, to continue and conclude the discussions on observational learning. Thank you.